inside of this struct, we have an age and we have a name. And so these are exactly what structs will look like in Objective-C. And coming down here, we see we declare a variable of this struct type, Alice. And we're going to use dot notation to access the fields in that struct. So Alice.age equals 20, and Alice.name equals Alice. Then we can do the same thing. We just declare Bob. And that's pretty much like everything about structs that you will need. So questions? Oh, and then if you want to look at the greet function. Up here, we are storing inside of bob.age21. And down here, we are accessing bob.age. OK. Next, we will also have enums, which are somewhat more important in Objective-C than they were in perhaps you've used in regular C, since there's a lot of the a lot of code you'll be working with uses a lot of enums. So what does an enum look like? So it's like a struct. And again, we're just using type def so that when we want to declare a variable of this enum type, we don't have to say enum genders x and enum genders y. Thanks to the type def, we can just say genders x and genders y. So enums aren't strictly necessary. We could instead do hash define female as 0 and hash define male as one. And hash define just declares this to be a constant. So right now, if I got rid of this, the two programs would be almost equivalent, except for the fact that I just got rid of the genders type. So why do we prefer enums over these hash defines? Because if I add a whole bunch of hash defines, something two, something three, something four, and then I decide to like reorder them, uh, then I would have to like change the numbers on all the rest of them. And also, it's just a convenient way that I don't have to explicitly list the numbers on all these things. Once we get to Objective-C, and I think more specifically Xcode, there's also some, well, it's coming down here. We see that we have changed this struct to now not, or now it takes a name and a gender. So Alice is going to be, uh, is going to be given the name Alice and is going to be given the gender female. So it's important to remember in C and also Objective-C that there is no enforcement of the gender's type. So I am just as easily able to put 100 underneath the hood. An enum is literally just an integer. So even though 100 is not a valid genders, it will let me do this. But in Xcode, generally, it will so it will yell at you like visually if you're using things that aren't correct enum types. So you'll want to use these enums correctly. And that's pretty much it for enums. Questions? OK. So then arrays. Regular C arrays are still going to work in Objective-C. You're also going to see that there are these new array classes that you're probably going to want to get used to. So you might not be using them that much. Uh, just to look at an example of using the arrays. So here, uh, we declare a variable int n. We print enter number of exams. And then scanf is just a way of grabbing input from the keyboard. So here we are scanfing for some integer. This percent %d carries over from printf. It's looking for an integer. And why do we need to, pre why do we need to pass ampersand n and not just n? Why would this never work? Yeah. So inside of the scanf function, just like we saw before with the swap function, ideally, after this point in time, n equals whatever number I typed at the keyboard. So scanf needs to actually change this n. Scanf can't change that without a pointer to that n, without having the address of that n. 
Otherwise, if I just did this, then, well, first it wouldn't compile. But assuming it did accept that, uh, it would just try to set the local variable n to the en keyboard entered value, and this n would remain unchanged. So we need to pass the address. Here we are declaring an array, and that array is going to be of size n. So we're going to have n integers. And this is all going on the stack so far. And then we're iterating over the n values, entering a grade into each individual spot in the array. So really, the, this program is going to behave like, how many grades do you want to enter? Three. What is the first grade? What is the second grade? What is the third grade? So you enter each grade. Uh, and also, we have to pass, so grades i is the ith position in the array. And then we also need to pass that by reference. We need to pass the pointer to grades i for the same reason that we needed to pass the pointer to n. Questions? So memory management, uh, it's one of the bigger problems in C. And for the most part, you aren't going to have to deal with it in Objective-C. There are some small things you'll have to think about. And we'll get to that next week. But the malloc and free stuff that you're used to, uh, you don't really have to deal with. So remember that we have our stack and our heap. And so all of our local variables are always stored on the stack. And this means that, say, I call some function, and it needs to like return some array to the function that called it. It can't just return, it can't just declare an array on the stack and return it, because once the function returns, that array is gone. That's the point of it being a local variable. The array is gone. So malloc, what that does is allocate space on the heap. and the stuff that al that's allocated on the heap survives past whenever the function happens to end, whenever that variable happens to go out of scope. And so what malloc and free are like manual memory management versus the automatic memory management of local variables. And something to keep in mind is that pretty much all objects are going to be like this. All objects are going to pretty much be malloc. They're going to go on the heap. And so they're going to continue existing after the scope of that variable ends. But thanks to the new iOS Objective-C features, you don't really have to think about freeing that memory. So we'll see why that's really useful. Yes. So the new, it's ARC, A-R-C, is automatic reference counting. And it will automatically collect these objects for you. That was not the case two or three years ago. Yeah. When you don't want to use arc. So the only thing I could really think of is like, if you wanted to be really explicit about the, like, you want to fine tune your program, overly optimize it to make it like run better. But that's probably not the best use of your time. Uh, it's it's, you are already using Objective-C, which there are a lot of things that that's not doing in the most optimized way possible. So pretty much any app nowadays is going to use Arc. Oh, so an example. It, it probably would, but. It's not really worth even trying to optimize your app for that. Yeah. No, it will not. You pretty much shouldn't be mallocking. Uh, I actually wonder, I'm not 100% sure, but I imagine it's already taking very strict control of what the heap looks like. And so if you start mallocking things on top of what it's trying to do with the heap, it might screw it up, but I'm not sure. 
you won't need to malloc. OK, objective C. So C questions before we move on to objective C stuff. Yeah. Oh, so that's, uh, well, in C, you would need to use free. Uh, so anything you malloc, at some point during the life of your program, you should also free. In Objective-C, that's the thing. So things are going to be somewhat automat automatically allocated for you, and they will be automatically deallocated for you. As long as you adhere to some things we'll see next week. OK, any other questions about C before some Objective-C stuff? OK, so from our hello world in C to our hello world in Objective-C, uh, there aren't too many changes. You'll see that it looks a lot like C in a lot of ways. Unfortunately, the first word has literally changed. So what do you think the difference is between include, like we used to say hash include, now we say hash import. So what do you think the difference is there? So hash import is smarter than hash include in that it will only import something exactly once. And so this used to be an issue with hash includes. Like if you hash include a header file twice and you don't take special precautions in that header file, then you might duplicate some definitions of things and it won't compile. Uh, hash import, no matter how, if I said hash import foundation dot, or like if I just copy and paste this line, the second line wouldn't do anything. So hash import is just going to be more efficient in that way. And the, another thing that looks somewhat different is this at symbol auto release pool. So that's going to be something we deal with next week. That has to do with automatic memory management. Uh, and the one thing to note, and we'll also see it in front of the hello world, this at symbol is a very objective C thing. So like if you see code and you see an at symbol, uh, you might be able to reason that it is objective C because you're going to see this all over the place. Uh, in case of the hello world, so normally we'd see just like string hello world. By putting the at symbol in front of it, we are making it an objective C type string. More explicitly, we are making it an NS string. So we're going to see that in a couple other places. But now this. This at hello world is an object that we are passing to the ns log function. Let's actually run that. So, what is the ridiculous? Oh, I have it. So, you will pretty much never need to compile at the command line. Uh, because once we get into Xcode, that's going to pretty much be everything you need. Uh, but here, we have compiled that program. It's exactly the same as the one that we saw in the slide. And running it, we see something that looks like this. So we see the date. We see the time. We see main. And then this happens to be the process ID and then something called the mock port that you don't have to care about at all and then the actual thing that we NS logged. So this is what NS log does. You will probably be using NS log pretty frequently in your uh, programs to debug things. In actual released apps, you probably want to get rid of your NS logs or have them wrapped in like debug type statements. Uh, since once you're on an iPhone, you pretty much don't have access to anything that is NS logs. I think theoretically, you can like plug in your iPhone to your computer and see what was NS logged. But uh, that's rare. Like anything released to the App Store isn't going to have any of those. Okay, so this is our first exposure to an object, but it doesn't really feel like an object because we pretty much should put an at sign in front of it. Uh, that's technically shorthand for creating a string object. And we, I think we'll see the longhand later, or we'll at least see many other objects that we're going to be creating. So useless side that just says, everything so far has been the command line. Everything can be done at the command line. You probably won't want to do things at the command line. So Xcode is 